In module four, our main objective is to size gates that lie in a meaningful chain of logic rather than isolated on their own. So here's the problem we are dealing with. Let's imagine that we have a chain of logic and in that chain of logic, there is a specific logic gate J that is driving another logic gate J minus one, J plus one, and they all lie within a big chain of logic containing n gates numbered from zero to gate n minus one, right? And the question is, what is the delay of stage J and how do we uh, minimize the delay of stage J? How do we size stage J? Do we make it larger or smaller? So the question is, stage J, if we can multiply the aspect ratios of all the transistors by K, if we can magnify it, should we or should we not? And if we look at the delay of stage J, it's equal to 0.69 times the resistance of stage J into the internal capacitance of stage J plus the external capacitance that stage J observes. And there's something really important to notice here is that the intrinsic capacitance that any stage notices is usually the drain capacitance from the uh, current stage. The external capacitance that, that, it, that it observes is always going to be gate capacitance from the next stage. But in any case, the delay for stage J is going to be equal to 0.69 RJ times internal capacitance or intrinsic capacitance plus extrinsic capacitance. So this is going to be composed of two components, T internal plus T external, where T internal is 0.69 RJ C internal and C external, T external is 0.69 RJ C external. So it's composed of an external delay component and an intrinsic delay component. And again, the question is, have, if we multiply the aspect ratios of all transistors in gate J by K, if we magnify gate J by K, what happens to its delay? And the answer is really, really simple. Um, the delay of stage J will be affected in the following way. The resistance RJ is going to decrease by a factor of K, because if you increase size, W, the resistance will decrease proportionately. The intrinsic capacitance is going to increase by the same ratio K, and the external capacitance, the external loading from the next stage, is not going to be affected. So the intrinsic delay is going to be increased by, the intrinsic uh, capacitance is going to increase by K because it's a drain capacitance. The capacitance from the next stage is not affected because we have not resized the next stage. We have only resized the current stage. So this means that T internal, the intrinsic delay component, remains constant because K cancels out. Resistance decreases by the same amount that capacitance increases by. However, T external, the external delay component, is going to decrease by a factor of K. So if we ask the very simple question, if we want to minimize the delay of stage J, and if delay is all that we care about, what should we do with its size? Then the answer is you should make it as large as possible. But there is a problem here, which is that stage J is also the external loading on the stage before it. So if you increase the size of stage J by a factor of K, this means that C external for stage J minus one is also going to be increased by the factor of K. This causes the total delay of stage J minus one to increase by a factor of, uh, by nearly a factor of K, which forces stage J minus one to also increase its size. This increases the uh, loading on stage J minus two, forcing stage J minus two to become larger, and the increase in size will propagate down the chain without actually giving us any benefit. It is just to preserve stage um, delays that we had before. So what's the problem here? The problem here is that we are dealing with the same, with the incorrect, or, uh, or uh, we're not dealing with the correct optimization objective. What we should be looking at is the delay through the whole chain, TP not the delay for, for stage J. The delay for stage J is not a valid optimization objective because it will just tell you to always make the gate as large as possible. We have to look at the delay of the entire chain because that's where we have uh, conflicting requirements. So to do this, we have to uh, talk about a few preliminary uh, assumptions. The first of which is an uh, observation actually more than an assumption. And it is the fact that uh, the gate capacitance and the drain capacitance of a transistor are usually um, related in quantity. 
so that the amount of one is usually related to the amount of another using a constant of proportionality. Specifically, we observe that CD is usually equal to C to gamma times CG, which means that both of them are uh, proportionate to each other. Note that this does not mean that we are saying that the uh, uh, that the drain capacitance and gate capacitance for a transistor are physically connected. They happen to to completely different uh, physical phenomena. However, we do say that we observe that for a certain technology, their values are related. So, for example, when we said that CGN naught is equal to uh, C naught and uh, CDN naught is equal to uh, 0.7 C naught, this just means that. <clears throat> that gamma is equal to 0.7 because drain capacitance is always going to be 0.7 gate capacitance regardless of the size of the transistor as long as the um, as uh, the not values the unit transistor values are related in a certain way the values for any other size are going to be related in the same way i'll notice that this also applies to <clears throat> all gates it doesn't only apply to a transistor it actually also applies to um, a, a unit inverter or a, a, an inverter size at any size or an AND gate or whatever. Because if this, um, if the uh, gate capacitance here is, for example, uh, 3C0 and the drain capacitance here is 2.7C0, then what we know is that gamma is equal to 2.7 divided by 3, right? Because drain capacitances for the two, uh, NMOS and the PMOS transistor are going to be related to their gate capacitances using a constant of proportionality. And so this relation, CD equals gamma CG, applies equally well to gates as well as to transistors. The second note we have to make is <clears throat> that when we say that we know the uh, size of a transistor, this is equivalent to saying we know the gate capacitance of this transistor. Why? Uh, let's assume that CGN naught is equal to C naught, and let's assume that I tell you that I know that the gate capacitance of this transistor is 10 C naught. This is equivalent to you knowing that W over L for this transistor is 10, which tells you the size of the transistor. But this also applies to inverters, because if I tell you that the input capacitance of this inverter is 9 C naught, then you know for, for a fact that W over L for the um, NMOS is going to be 3 and W over L for the PMOS is going to be 6. Why do you know that? Because you know that for the unit inverter, the sizes are 1 and 2 for an input capacitance of 3C0. And therefore, 9C0 over 3C0 gives us 3, which means that our inverter has a K of 3. It is sized three times larger than the unit inverter. Of course, this makes the assumption that we always size so that we have symmetric worst case delays, so that pull up and pull down resistances are equal. Notice that this applies equally well to gates as well as to inverters. So if we have a three input NOR gate, for example, and I tell you that this um, three input NOR gate okay, let's not do it this way. Let's say that we size uh, the NMOS transistors at K uh, where k is an integer number and to guarantee that we have a pull-up resistance of r naught we size the pull-up transistors at 6k each right <clears throat> and so if you look at the input capacitance the input capacitance 7k c naught and so if i tell you that the input capacitance we see here is 21 c naught you know that 21 c naught is equal to 7k c naught which gives a k of 3 and it allows us to know the size of this gate so this is a very important observation. Knowing the input capacitance of a gate is tantamount to knowing its size because the, the two are proportional to each other. Now, uh, one final thing we have to say, we have to do is to uh, um, systematically state the problem that we are dealing with. And the problem is we have a chain of logic gates. They are different logic gates. All we know about them is their types. So we know which is an AND, which is a NOT, which is a complex gate. And we also know um, the number of stages. So we know N and they are numbered from zero to N minus one. So we are given the following. We're given N, the number of stages. We're given the gates. So which gate is which function. We're also given CL the loading capacitance CL at the output. So the chain is driving uh, some kind of load. We have to know what that load is and how much it is 
because that is um, a limitation that is imposed on us from the outside. We also know the gate capacitance of the first stage CG0, so that's equivalent to knowing the size of the first stage. We know the size of the first stage. And what is required is size for all stages, so size for all J, so sizing for all transistors under, uh, under the uh, uh, objective of, what is our objective? The objective of minimizing TP, which is the delay through the entire chain. So now we have a meaningful uh, optimization objective, which is minimizing the delay through the entire chain. So again, the uh, givens are the number of stages, with what each stage is, the size of the first stage, the size of the capacitance we drive at, our, uh, at the output of the chain, and we are required to size the chain so that we minimize the total delay that this, uh, that this chain takes.